The Blue Eti AC200PL has four 2400 watt AC outlets, super fast 2400 watt mains charging, up to 1200 watt solar charging, and a massive 2304 watt hour long lasting LFP or LIFEPO battery. It's the most capable power station I've looked at so far. It'd be perfect for home backup, an RV or camper van, or even a complete off grid setup. I'll run through its capabilities and thoroughly test all its claims to help you decide if this is the right power station for you. So let's take a closer look. Inside the box you get the power station itself, an AC charging cable, a DC charging cable, a solar charging cable and a car charging cable. There's also a grounding bolt and an instruction manual and all the cables can be stored in the supply bag. The AC200PL is an upgrade on the recently released AC200L. It has a larger 2304 watt hour battery, two wireless charging pads on top of the unit, and a seemingly random change to orange accents instead of the usual blue. Unsurprisingly, with this huge long lasting LFP battery, it's a hefty unit at 28.3 kilograms. You can see its dimensions on screen. You'll need two hands to carry the unit, and it's really on the verge of what I call portable. It's mostly constructed from plastic and feels well made. But despite rubber flaps over the AC and DC outputs and rubber seals on the mains and DC inputs, it has no IP rating. The open vents around the side that reveal the internal electronics are fully exposed to the elements. The similarly priced Bluetti AC240 does have weather sealing, but has a smaller battery and weighs even more than the AC200PL. I hope to look at that model too soon. The left side of the unit houses the various charging inputs. You can charge by a mains at up to 2,400 watts, solar at up to 1,200 watts, or a 12 volt car outlet at just over 100 watts. Unlike the older AC200P and AC200 Max, this unit does support mains charging. You no longer need a large heavy AC adapter. But unlike every power station I've tested that supports mains charging, including the Bluetti AC180 I looked at recently, Bluetti has decided to use a proprietary three pin connector rather than a standard IEC mains cable. So you have to use their cable, and when I checked I couldn't even see where you could order a spare. And as luck would have it, the cable that came with my unit came apart after only a small amount of use, so I had to get a replacement from Bluetti. The connection is more secure with a locking ring and it has rubber seals, which is a good thing, even if the rest of the unit has no waterproof rating. But I'd much prefer a standard and ubiquitous mains connection. The DC input also has a similar proprietary connector, this time with two pins. The other end has a standard XT60 connector which connects to the solar charging and car charging cables. There's also a larger battery input port for connecting to Bluetti's various expansion batteries, including the B230. Charging off mains is very fast, although you'll need to configure the unit via its settings menu or using the app for the fastest turbo charging. By default, it'll charge at around 1200 watts in standard mode. This is the recommended mode to extend the life of the battery. A full charge with a battery completely drained took just under 3 hours 20 minutes in this mode. Press and hold the AC and DC buttons for 2 seconds to access the settings menu. Cycle through to the AC charging mode using the DC button and change the mode to turbo with the AC button. In this setting menu you can also configure eco mode and turn on power lifting mode which I'll discuss later. It's easier doing all this with the app which connects via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. To switch to turbo mode in the app go to settings charging mode, turbo. Now you can charge the unit at an impressive 2400 watts. Bluetti claims the unit will reach 80% charge in just one hour. It took a little longer than that in my test, just under one hour 20 minutes. A full charge took two hours seven minutes, which is still super fast for such a huge battery. Charging times will depend very much on ambient temperatures and the temperature of the unit itself. If the power station has been worked hard, charging speeds will be lower until the unit has cooled down sufficiently, which can take a while in my experience. The unit also has an interesting option under the advanced setting menu. You can adjust the maximum mains charging current using max charging current off grid. So you could lower this value if you're charging off another power station, for example, so you don't overload it. But there's also a pro mode that lets you increase the charging amps beyond the default 10 amp maximum all the way to 16 amps. I think this is more intended for the US market which is on a lower voltage. Here in the UK, we're at 240 volts, and even the default 10 amps should achieve the maximum 2,400 watts. I did test this up to 16 amps, which would blow the fuse in a standard UK 13 amp plug. 
but the unit still just charges at the maximum 2400 watts. I ended up leaving this at 11 amps, which did more consistently provide the full 2400 watt turbo charging speed. I got just a little under 2400 watts at the default 10 amps. You do need to contact Lurti support to get the passcode to access the Pro Mode, but honestly in the UK and anywhere else on 240 volts, it's probably not worth a hassle. Solar charging is equally impressive and very flexible. The 1200 watt solar charging input can accept a voltage range from 12 volts all the way up to 145 volts, with a maximum current of 15 amps. So you can connect several solar panels in series without overloading the unit. Initially I ran the power station off the Bluetti 350 watt foldable PV350. The DC charging cable plugs into the 2 pin port on the unit and the solar charging cable with an XT60 connector plugs into this. This cable has standard MC4 connectors on the other end that plug into the solar panel's integrated cable. With some patchy sunshine I did get over 320 watts with this setup. In the Bluetti app if you click on the PV input you can see the power and also the voltage. I connected the 200 watt Bluetti PV200 panel in series to the PV350. This is very easy to do. Just connect the positive of one solar panel to the negative of another and the loose positive and negative connections to the AC200PL. I got over 400 watts with this setup and the voltage was around 56 volts. Depending on the voltage of your solar panels, you should be able to connect at least three even high power panels like the PV350 without exceeding the 140 volt limit of the input or even more, cheaper, lower voltage units with lower power output. Using my benchtop power supply, I set the maximum current to 15 amps and took the voltage all the way to its maximum 61 volts to mimic two panels in ideal conditions. I could get over 700 watts with this setup. I don't have a more powerful power supply to test this to its limits, but I'll see if I can max out the PV input with more solar panels in series when I get a chance. I'll update the written article at thetechnologyman.com accordingly. Finally, I tested charging the power station off a 12 volt car outlet using the supplied car charging cable. This again connects into the XT60 connector off the proprietary adapter. At voltages under 33 volts, you're limited to 8 amps. I got just over 100 watts from a 12 volt car outlet and just over 200 watts off a 24 volt outlet. Again, tested using my bench power supply. The AC200PL supports dual charging. You can charge off AC and solar at the same time. Free solar power will take priority over the mains input. In standard and silent mode, if you max out the PV input, you won't draw anything from mains. In turbo mode, the unit will still pull up to 1200 watts, even with the PV input at its 1200 watt maximum. The AC200PL has a massive 2400 watt AC inverter. This should be enough to power the majority of items you can run off a standard UK plug socket. In the UK, the unit has four 240 volt AC outlets with pure sine wave outputs, important for sensitive electronics. I confirm their pure sine wave output with a graphical multimeter. Using a couple of heaters and a voltage regulator to set the output more precisely, I was able to run the power station at its maximum output of 2400 watts until the battery was exhausted. Even more impressively, I was able to increase this all the way to 2900 watts for up to two minutes without overloading the power station. Much beyond that, you blow your 13 amp fuse anyway. Bluetti also claims the unit can surge to over 3,600 watts briefly, so you might be able to run devices like machinery with induction motors with a high startup draw, within reason. I couldn't do my usual tests with the machinery I own, since they are all in storage at the minute, while we build on the house. But I did try running a few household items as well as the heaters. They ran a microwave, a coffee machine, and even a kettle without overloading the power station. I think unless you have extreme demands, the AC200PL should cover your AC inverter needs. And there is also the usual power lifting mode, which you can enable for purely resistive loads, typically with heating elements and basic electronics. This will let you run these devices rated at more than 2400 watts by reducing the voltage. You're not getting more power out of the unit. I've covered this in previous reviews, and I'd recommend avoiding this mode unless you're 100% sure there are no sensitive electronics that might be damaged by operating at reduced voltages. Next, I tested the parasitic drain of the AC inverter, i.e. how much power the AC inverter itself uses, even with nothing connected. I turned off eco mode and left the AC inverter on for 12 hours with nothing plugged in. The battery dropped from 100% to 89% in that time, so 11% drain in just 12 hours. 
This is not unusually high, but I'd still recommend leaving eco mode switched on so the unit will automatically power itself off when it's not in use. In the app, you can configure the shutdown timer and the minimum AC power between 10 and 40 watts. I did also test the DC outputs for parasitic drain. I again turned off eco mode and left the DC and USB subsystems on for 12 hours. This time the battery dropped from 100% to 95%, little more than I was expecting. The battery remained at 100% with a similar test on the Bluetti AC180. But it's less parasitic drain than using AC, you're still better off running items that have intermittent power requirements, like this EcoFlow Glacier Fridge Freezer off DC. In DC mode, I often leave eco mode off too. You don't generally want the unit turning off. Devices charging off USB, for example, often use less than the 5 watt minimum setting. I tested the DC outputs with the load tester. The 12 volt car outlet is spec to 10 amps maximum. I got to just over 11 amps and around 138 watts before it shut off. Below the 12 volt car outlet, there's a 48 volt 8 amp proprietary DC output for connecting to the optional D40 battery charger, which I don't currently have, so can't test. I could confirm as output, I measured 52 volts with a multimeter. But if I try to pull even the smallest load from the port, the voltage dropped to zero. The AC200PL has four USB outputs, two 100 watt power delivery 3.0 USB-C outputs, and two 18 watt Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 USB-A ports. I loaded both 100 watt ports at their maximum 20 volt 5 amp output without any issues. I also load tested both the USB-A ports for their maximum 18 watts. It's a decent range of outputs, but I would have liked at least one of the USB-C outputs to support USB power delivery 3.1 at 140 watts for more demanding laptops like the 16 inch MacBook Pro for example. The AC200PL also has two 15 watt wireless charging pads that charge my iPhone 15 Pro Max at around 10 watts. Just quickly before I continue, if you're finding this video interesting or helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel. It costs you nothing and really encourages me to make more content. From my YouTube statistics, only a tiny percentage of people watching my channel are subscribed, and I'd really like to change that. I measured the usable capacity of the 2,304 watt hour built-in battery. I ran a heater via an energy monitoring plug at around 1,000 watts until the power station turned off. The unit ran for 2 hours and 7 minutes and consumed 2,189 watt hours. That's a very impressive 95% efficiency, which is about the best I've seen from any power station. I got less impressive results off the DC output with a 10 amp electronic load attached. I measured 1658 watt hours with just 72% efficiency, which is a very disappointing result. When I get a chance, I'll repeat this test at a lower output and update my written article accordingly. I tried loading up the AC200PL to its limits to see how it coped. With 2400 watts via the AC outlet, over 100 watts via the DC 12 volt car outlet, 100 watts off the USB-C port, and a phone charging on the wireless charging pad, I let the unit run for five minutes without any issues. In total, the AC200PL was delivering over 2,600 watts. And checking temperatures of the unit with my thermal imaging camera, it didn't get too hot either. The hottest part of the unit around the exhaust fan never got much over 50 degrees Celsius, though that will depend on your ambient temperatures. Even charging the unit at 2,400 watts on top of the maxed out load, the temperature remained at around 50 degrees Celsius. And the unit is also remarkably quiet. It takes a fair load for the fans to even come on. But charging at turbo speeds and running a 2 kilowatt electric heater on an extension lead in another room so as not to interfere with the test, the fans are barely noticeable. My usual test one meter away from the unit with a decibel meter barely registered above room noise at around 38 decibels. You might notice the fans if you're sleeping immediately next to the exhaust vent but otherwise it's unlikely they'll bother you. The AC200PL also makes an excellent uninterruptible power supply or UPS. If you run any AC devices while it's connected via mains, these devices will bypass the battery and run directly off mains until there's a power outage. At this point in less than an imperceptible 20 milliseconds, they'll switch to battery power. I tested this running my desktop computer and it worked perfectly. In the Blue Etty app, you can customize the UPS function. For example, in the time control mode, you can use mains to charge the AC200PL while electricity is cheap, and then switch to battery during peak hours when electricity might be more expensive. I've covered a few of the options available in the app throughout the review. The app lets you connect directly via Bluetooth 
or you can remotely control the unit over Wi-Fi. This connects the power station to Blurty's cloud over Wi-Fi, and then so long as you have an internet connection, you can control the unit wherever you are. I did have a few issues with this Wi-Fi connection and often had to resort to connecting directly via Bluetooth. But overall, the app makes customizing and monitoring the power station much easier. And you can, of course, upgrade the firmware too via the app. I do still like that some of the main functions like charging speeds and eco mode are configurable directly from the unit itself though. The AC200PL is one of the most capable power stations I've tested so far. I've tested a few. It has a huge long lasting LFP battery backed up with a five year warranty, super fast charging either via mains or solar, and an AC inverter that should power even the most demanding devices. There's also expandable battery options, a useful range of USB ports and wireless charging, and it's very quiet, even fast charging or under heavy load. I'm not keen on the proprietary mains and DC charging cables, the lack of any IP rating, and it is heavy, the downside of a high capacity integrated LFP battery. It's also quite expensive compared to the AC200L. I'm not sure the wireless charging pads and larger battery are worth the current extra cost, but keep an eye on prices. If they're closer in price, I would pay the extra for these features. If you can cope with a smaller battery, the AC180 I reviewed recently is a bargain, at the moment at least. It still has a decent 1800 watt inverter and is far more portable. And from EcoFlow, I particularly like the similarly spec Delta II. I've reviewed all these power stations and many more. I'll have links down to these reviews below. And I'll also provide affiliate links so you can check out current pricing and any offers. Purchasing via these links also helps support the channel and accompanying website. Do let me know what you think of the AC200PL. Are you considering it or do you already own this model or the AC200L? Or if there's another power station you want me to test, please let me know. As always, if you have any questions, please ask. I read every comment and will do my best to respond. I do hope you found this video useful. Please like the video if you did. I'm releasing videos every week on the latest technology and how to get the most out of it. So please make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to tap the bell icon if you want to get notified as soon as a new video gets uploaded. Thanks for watching.